Recently, I had the honor and the privilege of interviewing Bismarck Lepe, CEO and founder of Wiseline, who told me all about the new Generative Artificial Intelligence Laboratory they have just opened in collaboration with Tecnológico de Monterrey. And here, here is the interview. Listo, vamos. Perfect. Okay, Bismarck, thanks for accepting my interview. It's a really pleasure to talk with you here at the Tecnológico de Monterrey. And what do you feel today? I'm, I'm feel very today? excited. And I'm excited that, that we're doing it in, in English because I feel like I, I sound a little more intelligent when I'm speaking English. <laughs> my, because my, my parents used to, you know, we, we were migrant field workers. And until I was seven, I would spend a lot of time in Mexico. But oh. my Spanish, I feel, is that of a, of a seven-year-old. Where pero, are you como, from? pero como gustes. En inglés, español, <laughs> un poco de francés. Oh, French. Voulez-vous yeah. parler français? Uh, un peu. Un peu. <laughs> I, I had a, a girlfriend who was French, and I took French for a long time. So Ooh. back then, my French was quite good. <laughs> Now, not so much. It will be a podcast about love or something like love that. Love and tech. Instead of a tech interview. Oh, especially <laughs> once you have AI, love tech is going to get very weird. Yeah, of course. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Southern Cal I was born in Southern California, but my family is from a small town here uh, near Guadalajara, oh, here in Jalisco. Cool, cool. Blood, Mexican blood. <laughs> and I, I feel like I'm 100% Mexican and 100% U.S. American. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, in order to start, what sparked the creation of Mexico's first generate AI lab? Tell us. So I, I would start with why did we start investing in Mexico? Uh, okay. So my prior company, Uyala, which was a video platform company that we started in 2007 and we sold in 2014. Um, in 2009, as we saw that the, it was getting very competitive to hire and retain talent in the Silicon Valley, we looked far and wide, Eastern Europe, um, Southeast Asia, South America and Argentina. And the consultant we hired said, you know what, Mexico is really interesting. And because my parents had left Mexico, I had never really thought about investing in, in Mexico. And so we, we took a recruiting trip down to Guadalajara and Tech Monterrey, and we interviewed 15 engineers, and of the 15, eight, you know, our CTO at the time, who had zero connection to Mexico, Sean Knapp, right, from Washington State, he said, these eight are as good, if not better, than the engineers we worked with at Google, because we had worked at Google. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, we decided to invest in Guadalajara. And since then, I feel like we've been a part of, of the tech ecosystem. And you know, as a kid, every time I would come into Guadalajara, I would see the big sign that would say uh, the Silicon Valley of, of oh, Mexico. Yeah. Um, and I think right now is a really interesting opportunity. Uh, you know, they say that Nietzsche used to say nothing happens for decades and then decades happen in weeks. So everybody's been talking about AI, but I think ChatGPT made it a reality, but it was a reality of decades worth of work, right? Chips and algorithms and infrastructure that, that all of the innovation that we're seeing that is possible is happening right now. And so why the AI lab? Um, I think this is going to transform society in the same way that electricity transformed society. Oh, and okay. Unlike you know, the first wave of tech evolution that, that coined the Silicon Valley of Mexico, I think we're at the early stages or writing the early chapters. And so in the same way that Silicon Valley was, the Silicon Valley in California, was a great integration of industry and academia, I think right now that at the early stages of AI, we have the opportunity to create that here with Tech de Monterrey of bringing in talent, academia, and corporations to really build something special and innovate and, and change the course of Mexico. <laughs> I will answer uh, why did you choose Guadalajara, but you already answered. That. The talent. <laughs> yeah, the talent. of course. Of course. I love that you say it's like uh, Silicon Valley here in Mexico. Well, what's, what's interesting, and, and every time you travel around the world and everybody tries to recreate the Silicon Valley, um, but it's difficult because you need yeah. a lot of different elements. You need investment, you need corporations, you need academia. What you have in Guadalajara is 
multi-generational investment in technology. And so at WiseLine, we have engineers, software engineers, whose grandparents worked at IBM, their parents worked as chip designers at Intel, and now they're software engineers at WiseLine. Okay. Uh, also, the culture and the mindset will have a really huge uh, part of all of this change. Well, I, I think if you're going to be in tech, you have to care about math and science, yeah. and you have to have, care about academics. Okay, cool. What do you foresee as the lab's impact on AI research and innovation in Mexico? Tell us, please. So one of the key aspects of AI um, that I think is, is important, and so, you know, I, I always like to talk about how this is as transformative as, as electricity, it's how you apply it. Okay. And you have, you have cloud computing mm -hmm. and you have all of the industries could obviously benefit from it, but it, it's not immediately obvious uh, that a farmer could, could leverage cloud computing to gather more yield from, from their business, from their crops. Okay. But with AI, you're immediately able to have some of the smartest people in the world working for you to solve some of your biggest problems. So if you're trying to figure out overall yield, if you're trying to figure out how you're going to allocate your team to go pick the crops that are highest yielding, like all of that is now possible with all of the new AI tools. And so one of the first aspects that we're going to be very focused on is how do we apply AI to different industries? And again, not just the tech industry, not just the software development industry, yeah. but agriculture, sports, manufacturing, logistics. How do you apply AI? Another big part of it is going to be the research and development uh, that we're going to be working with, with the professors and the students that we're going to be providing scholarships to, to be working on some of these new technologies, new models, to be able to create true intellectual property that originates from this lab and not just something that we're applying from other parts of the world. Oh, cool, amazing. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, we need appliances in other industries, <laughs> not just essays or programming or something oh, yeah, like that. Like learn how to cheat for, <laughs> your, for your English essay, right? Like, it shouldn't just be that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> tell me please on your personal note, uh, what does the milestone mean to you and Wayne's line? What does this scale means to you? So my, my general philosophy is that you, if you have the ability to do good, to help, you have a responsibility to do so. And at WiseLine, because we are a global company, uh, we have thousands of WiseLiners worldwide that help companies launch new products, build technology to solve problems and pursue opportunities, mm -hmm. we see what's happening in other parts of the world. And I feel that in Latin America, we're, we're a little behind. We're just now starting to adopt cloud. And so we figure that because we, are, we can already see how these technologies are being applied uh, to important problems and opportunities in other parts of the world, we can bring this knowledge to Tec de Monterrey and build a lab to help elevate and to help all of the other industries catch up to where their international and global competitors uh, may be. And what I think is really, really exciting, again, like I said, you know, the reason that Guadalajara is called the Silicon Valley of, of Mexico is because IBM opened a manufacturing plant in no. the 1960s and HP opened manufacturing in the 1980s, but they were manufacturing and they opened 50 years after the companies were founded. I think right now we're, we're like in the early stages of something new. And so in some ways we don't know the future that we can actually build. And that's why we want this to be a lab. We don't want this to be a, a funded startup because we do want to experiment and see what comes out of this. Oh, cool. Well, Jara has a great history in technology, of course. Um, why did you choose Tecnológico de Monterrey, Tec de Monterrey? So we, we believe in academia. We believe in teaching. Um, you know, one, of, one of the things that we saw uh, a couple of years ago was that we were finding it difficult to find talent that had a certain amount of experience okay. in, in new technologies. 
because the, the adoption wave of technology in Mexico is still fairly new, right? And so we launched this six-week uh, academy program. It was six weeks, six nights a week, uh, four hours a night for user experience because we were finding it difficult to um, find people who had a UX experience building iOS apps. And oh. so we set up this program and we had about 350 people apply. And of the 350 people, we let 25 people into the program. 24 graduated. One person dropped out. And we ended up hiring 15, wow. of, the, 15 of the 24. That's a really good uh, rate. Yeah, that, that was really good. It was a fantastic program. Yeah. And so we saw that it was so successful that we expanded that program. Uh, and now we've reached 40,000 people since the start of, of that program. But that's, that's just us. That's... That's Wiseline Academy. Tec de Monterrey, other academic institutions have a much greater footprint. They can reach millions of people every year. And so we think it's important that we partner with academic institutions. We work with them to identify the areas that the market cares about to make sure that we bring the level of experience to them. Now, I, uh, I loved working with Tec de Monterrey. About a third of our company uh, are ex at techs. They're graduates of Tec de Monterrey. And what I've loved about Tec de Monterrey is that they're very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm on the board of Tec de Monterrey here in Guadalajara. And a few months ago, when we were, when we were having our board meeting, we were talking about enzymes and we were talking about biotech, but not a single second or a single minute was spent on, on artificial intelligence. And my my comment to the board was, this is going to transform the world. If we're not spending at least a third of our time talking about this, we're falling behind. And Claudia, uh, the, the director who runs all of the, the West Coast, or the West, all the campuses said, well, put your time and money where your mouth is. And so we put a working group together on the Wiseline side and on the tech side, and we came up with this idea of the lab. And so we're investing 9 million pesos to launch this lab here in Tec de Monterrey. And we're, as Wiseline, we're going to be sponsoring a million dollars worth of scholarships that are going to be very focused on the development and the study of artificial intelligence for, for those students. And so, again, I love that Tec de Monterrey, like, in a matter of months, we were able to get all of this together, get the investments ready to go. And now we're going to start to see the impact. Oh, cool. Speaking of students and AI, how do you see the future of AI shaping up in Mexico and in Latin and globally, of course? Well, I would say that it's, it's in our hands. Like, we're defining the future right now. Like, so how would I like to see it shape up? Well, I think AI should be considered like electricity. It becomes a commodity. But the earliest companies to apply it are the ones that are going to see incredible productivity improvements, right? They're going to be able to get greater yield of their people in working in the fields. They're going to be able to come up with better routes for their trucks. They're, uh, they're, they're going to be able to come up with new uh, methodologies to be able to operate on people. And so the productivity gains that Mexico could get from AI now everyone is talking about nearshoring and everything that's happening in China and more manufacturing coming back, back to Mexico. But this could be a flash in the pan. We saw this happen in the 90s. A lot of maquiladora investment uh -huh. came into Mexico. Yeah. And then China emerged in the 2000s and Mexico lost all that business. Well, right now a lot of investment is coming into Mexico. But what if India suddenly comes up? India has 10 times more people than Mexico. So what does Mexico need to do? Mexico needs to invest in technology, needs to invest in innovation, needs to invest in AI, AI as a tool to get 10x the amount of productivity, maybe even 100x the amount of productivity to be able to compete against some of these other places where investment's going to flow. Ooh. It's lo it looks like a really huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity and we need to take it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I really, I, just agree with you. Can, what can you tell us about the money located to scholarships? How do you make this decision to make the gay and light? And how important is education for Wiseline, for example? 
So we're earmarking about a million dollars uh, in scholarships, and initially we're going to start um, kind of with, with people who are already students in tech, and then eventually we're going to expand into postgraduate and, and make it a, an, an even bigger program. Um, but again, I, we, as WiseLine, consider AI so transformative um, that you know, hopefully this is really successful and we can expand on this in the coming years. Um, and, and not just do it with tech, but do it with other universities and eventually go even, you know, younger, not just, not just college students. Okay. Do you think AI will become Terminator, Ex Machina, or something like that? What do you think about that? I, I think it's, it's up to all of us, right? Like okay. we, many times we talk about how AI is going to impact technology. Um, but I think society can also impact AI in terms of the policies uh, that can be created, right? Like in World War II, we dropped two nuclear bombs yeah. and we ended World War II. And everybody assumed that that was the beginning of the end uh, because we had created this technology, this technology that was the destroyer of worlds. But it, there were the right policies Even enemies could agree that, uh, you know, uh, annihilation of the human race was probably a bad thing. And so as we think about working with tech, it's not just technology we're going to create, but it's also the policy around it. And how do, we, how do we build policy that makes sure that AI helps improve the living situation of all of society? Okay. Uh, in order to finish, is there anything else you would like to add to this interview? Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited that WiseLine is partnering uh, with, with tech. Um, our goal is to bring more companies in uh, because this is transformative. One, one stat that I always like to throw out there, ChatGPT and Bard right now have an IQ of between 140 and 160, depending on the test that they take. The expectation is the next version of ChatGPT is going to have an IQ that's going to be 10x that. And so things are moving really, really fast. And so right now it's the moment for individuals to learn how to use these tools, companies to start applying them, and for the academic systems to change how they, they think about academia and they prepare the next generation for, uh, for opportunities. Okay, good. And at last, but not least, can you see the camera and say, it is in witchcraft, it's technology, please? It isn't witchcraft, it's technology. <laughs> thanks, Vince Bismarck, thanks a lot for this interview. It was a really, really, really pleasure to me. Thanks. thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.